Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. We're constantly trying to become better improvisers and a part of becoming a better improviser is also to keep looking for new things that we can add to our vocabulary. It doesn't really matter if you're practicing to play over a song or a chord progression or just a single chord. It's important to have new things that you can introduce into your playing so that it keeps sounding fresh and that you don't play the same tired licks all the time. In this video I'm going to take a C minor 7 chord, so just a basic C minor 7 Dorian sound and then I'm gonna go over a list of things that you can start working with and probably you know some of these already, maybe you're aware of them but you're not using them in the context of a C Dorian sound and then that's gonna give you some new stuff that you can add to your vocabulary and to your solos and you can start exploring and in that way build your vocabulary. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes and check out some interesting arpeggios and chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This is of course a C minor 7 chord, so probably the basic place to start is to use a C minor 7 arpeggio, so that'll be this. And the sound that I'm using in terms of uh, scale sound is the Dorian scale sound, so that would be this scale, so C, D, E flat, F, G, A and B flat. And if we take some of the other 7th uh, chord arpeggios that are sort of in that scale and that are closely connected to a C minor 7, then we get the one from the 3rd of the chord, which is an E flat major 7. The one that's from the fifth, which is a G minor seven, and those three were one I was using in uh, the solo that I played just a second ago. And of course, you can use more arpeggios than this. I would say start with these three, and you can always explore using other ones. Kind of depends on, on whether you're playing on a modal C minor seven or if it's part of some other progression. Whether you want to use them, because if you're playing for a long time, then you can start getting into some arpeggios that are not that clear. But if it's only C minor 7 for half a second, then maybe you want to play something that's a little bit more closely related to the chord. Maybe it's a little bit guitar oriented to go straight to the pentatonic scales in, at this point, but at the same time I think pentatonic scales is probably some of the first things that you learn on any instrument and it's also such a huge part of the melodic language that we're used to both from jazz, pop and rock music. So in these examples I went over the three minor pentatonic scales that you have in a C minor Dorian scale. The first one is obviously the C minor pentatonic which fits the scale perfectly because it's just the basic. Uh, C minor 7 arpeggio with an added 11th. The next one I used is the one found on the 5th of the chord, so that's a G minor pentatonic. Now this doesn't have sort of the most important note to get the color of the C minor across because it doesn't have an E flat, but at the same time it does contain the 9th and if you're improvising then you can get a lot of nice colors and it, it also has a little bit sort of a C sus sound but maybe this sort of vagueness is also something you want to explore a bit, little bit when you're soloing. It depends on the context. And the last one is uh, the D minor pentatonic, so that's D, F, G, A, C. And this scale does have one note that has a lot of tension against the C minor 7, because that's the A. That sounds like a 13 on top of this. And you may or may not want to have that in there, but that's certainly the biggest part of the effect that you get from using this scale sound on top of a C minor 7. It's of course also important to look at which triads do we have available 
as upper structure triads so that we can superimpose on top of our C minor seven chord here. And what I did in the solo that I just played was just really walking it up from the lowest note of the chord. So I started on C with a C minor triad. And then the next one was an E flat major triad. And then a G minor. And then finally a B flat major triad. So really just sort of looking at stacks of thirds within the scale. Uh, up to the B flat, up to the 11th. You could take this further, of course, if you're playing on a modal C minor, then uh, you can start working with the, the F major triad and also the, the D minor triad. It really depends on the situation. If you want to get the sound of the chord across, then you want to have something that sticks a little bit closer, so you at least have an E flat in the sound. And probably if you want to get the sound across also, you don't want to have the A as much as you want to have the B flat. This really depends on what kind of progression and what kind of situation you're in when you're soloing. Chordal arpeggios are a really great sound to use in your solos. And that's what I'm using in this solo that I just played. You can really use all of them and mess around with what works and what doesn't work. Chordal arpeggios are not in the same way as triads or seventh chords tied to a chord. So it's a little bit more open how you use them. The way you would do that is probably just to take, check them out on, on a string set like this and then experiment with it. Uh, the ones that I'm focusing on in the solo that I played here are the ones that are sort of neutral and easy to use on a C minor seven. Uh, so that's the one from F the one from G, and then the one from C, and the one from D. So all these will sort of contain, if not the basic notes of uh, the C minor seven, then at least something that's not gonna clash and we don't have the A in there, uh, or a tritone that we maybe don't really wanna hear on top of our C minor seven. This of course again depends on the context where you're improvising. Shell voicings are really just a reduced version of the diatonic seventh chords. So what we're doing here is that we're leaving out the fifth of the diatonic seventh chord, and then that gives us another structure, a three note structure, in fact, first a, a diatonic third, and then a diatonic fifth. So when I'm talking about the different things that I'm using in a solo here, I'm really focusing on the melodic aspect, and in that way, this is different from a seventh chord. And it's something that I really like to use. It's, it's a great sound just to have that open interval on top. Uh, and you can do a lot of things with it if you want to take it further than what I did in the solo here. I'm just using the basic sort of C minor, E flat major seven and G minor seven shell voicings. You can also just start moving around with, um, with the diatonic shell voicings and do the Papathini thing, which is probably the Papathini sound or the Papathini lick that he uses really often. As you can tell with the shell voicings, I really like to use the fifth interval in the melodies that I play. It's, it has a nice sort of signal sound to it. And in the solo that I just played, I was using the quintal arpeggios. So quintal arpeggios are really just stacks of fifth intervals. And the ones that I'm focusing on in this solo and the ones that I'm using the most are the one, it's really just building a quintal arpeggio for each of the notes in the pentatonic scale. So uh, in the C minor pentatonic scale. So for C, it's like C, G, D, E flat, is E flat, B flat, and F. And then for F, that's F, C, and G. And then for the G, I use that, I think I used that once or twice also, so that's a G, D, and A. And then from B flat, you have B flat, F, and C. And it's a nice open sound. They're a little bit more difficult to play. If you're not that familiar with the quintal voicings, then uh, go check out actually some of the Hendrix stuff. He uses it quite a lot, and also um, uh, Andy Sumner's from The Police. 
uses it. A lot of the famous police songs uses that sound as a chord. The drop two voicing arpeggios that I'm using here are really closely related to the C minor chord. So uh, I've used the C minor seven. I'm using E flat major seven, and I'm also using inversions of that one. So I'm using this one as well. And of course, I'm also using the G minor seven, and then I'm moving those around. And those are really the ones I'm focusing on. When you play a structure like this, uh, you're kind of relying a little bit more on being closely related to the chord because the low part of what you're playing is probably going to sort of sit really low in in, uh, in between what, what is happening with whoever's comping. So if you have a lot of extensions there, that might not sound really nice and it's going to make it really unclear. So in that way, I think these kind of structures work better if, you, if you're playing them, especially if you're playing the low part of them, uh, also that you're using structures that are really closely related to the chord. Are there any structures or triads or certain ways of playing triads that I left out that you use a lot? Then uh, leave a comment on this video because I'm of course curious and we're all looking for new ideas and new inspiration and stuff that we can use and a C minor 7, well there are a lot of C minor 7 or if you can transpose there are a lot of minor 7 chords that we can use this on so it's useful for most people so please leave a comment if you have a good idea. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies to check out and explore all the great things about jazz guitar and improvising. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep on making videos every week. And I'm very grateful for that. And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.